What's going on guys? Dylan DeJesus here. Thank you so much for joining us for another video. Episode 16 of Reviewing Your Customs and today we have four more great artist work to share with you guys. Super excited to get into these so let's go ahead and check them out. First up we have a pair from DT Lewis Customs. All right, let's see here. Some business cards, a little thank you card, and here's our note. Dear Dylan and team, first and foremost, I want to say thank you for being such a gem to the customs community and using your platform for not only teaching others how to avoid mistakes and improve their work, but also using it to showcase all of this talent we have out here. So about this custom, I really wanted to do something that brought back all that feeling of being a kid again, and since this is one of my all-time favorite characters, and Chucky Finster is my favorite character, I thought that I would bring this pair to life. Dope, we have a Rugrats custom to check out today. These are also available for sale on my Etsy site, DT Lewis Customs, where I am only doing 10 pairs that will be numbered and never made again. Thank you again for the opportunity. Hope to work on a project or collab on YouTube or just in general in the near future with you. Hope you have an amazing day. Your fellow customizer, Danny, AKA DT Lewis. Let's go ahead and check out the shoes. Okay, so we got a heat shrink wrap. Let's go ahead and cut that open. I always feel bad doing that. Oh man, right off the bat. This is such a killer cartoon custom theme pair where you did not need to go back and actually do a huge portrait of Chucky Finster on the side or anything like that. You just went in and included every single detail from the character himself, starting off with these green panels along with that little funky pattern that Chucky wore on his shorts. You have the blue of his t-shirt along with that planet graphic on the toe box. Sock liners and swooshes are done in purple to represent his glasses. Then we have the red laces for his shoes. And then our eyelet panels and back strap are done in orange for Chucky's signature hair color. The craftsmanship on this pair is really top notch stuff, which is something you totally need to nail when you're gonna be doing a really clean graphic approach like this. All of your panels and all of your colors are really packed in. All the colors turned out nice and saturated. Your attention to detail is really spot on. You went back and touched up all of your edges to the individual panels. And this is just a really clean pair overall. We also then have the Nike Air on the tongue tag of these done in this really cool cartoon style, which definitely fits the overall vibe of these. But I do think this could have been a great opportunity to do this Nike Air text in the same exact style as the Rugrats logo, which would have even further enhance the theme of these. It feels like the sock liners are still a little bit stiff so those may need just a little bit more heat setting or a little bit more fabric medium mixed into your paint. And then I do think that where you did the swooshes in purple, this might have been a cool opportunity to take an even more graphic approach, do the swooshes in white, and then have the purple as a little bit more of a thick outline around the swooshes themselves to then really help symbolize the frames of the glasses. But overall, this is a 100% through and through pair of Chucky Finster custom shoes. A ton of great details are packed in and the craftsmanship on these is extremely high level. So great job on these, buddy. Next up, we have a pair from Shaw Customs. All right, let's see here. Hey Dylan, thank you for taking the time to review my customs. Also for all the help you give to the customizing community. I combined Kid Cudi and The Weeknd for the theme on these Jordan 1s. I also used some of your stencils to add some texture to these shoes. Let me know what you think. Thanks, Shaw Customs. All right, I'm excited to see these. I love a good Kid Cudi theme. So we have two titans in the music industry featured on this pair, starting off with the right shoe, where we have the Kid Cudi theme and his Man on the Moon album cover art. I remember when that album came out, I was still in high school and that thing was on repeat nonstop. Then on the other shoe, we have the Weekend theme with his The Highlights album. 
I'm not sure which of these I think turned out better, but I've always had a love for that cover art that was on Man on the Moon where you see Kid Cudi's face just coming out of the moon. The color palette is absolutely insane and you really nailed it here. There's an insane amount of detail that you have packed into here and it's stretched across all of these different panels making your job that much harder. So I definitely have to commend you here for that one. Another great little touch on these is these hang tags that not only represent the musical artist, but also are great branding for you with your logo on them. I love your very subtle use of texture on all of these really colorful panels that match the same color palette from the album itself. And then I think that it was such a smart idea by you, how you really broke up this design by having some of these panels almost as a solid black where you have all black on the toe box and then you have some of these panels which are almost all black but they just have these white dots to represent the night sky. It would have been really easy to just do this colorful gradient across the entire shoe but then nothing would have had any room to breathe. Also, the way that you really broke things apart through your use of all of the various panels leads right into how this is such a well thought out design that features two totally different themes that are combined into one cohesive shoe. So if we take a look at our mudguard, quarter panel, and collar on the weekend theme shoe, you went ahead and did all of those in this really solid dark gray, whereas on the Kid Cudi theme shoe, you went ahead and did your mudguard, quarter panel, and collar in this really colorful textured gradient look. The toe box on the Kid Cudi theme shoe is done in a solid black, whereas on the weekend theme shoe, you went ahead and did that in a colorful, slightly textured gradient look. Then on both of the shoes, you left this middle eyelet panel in that factory white. So there is an absolutely incredible balance achieved through asymmetry on this pair. So when you're gonna tackle a design like this where you have two totally different themes to try to tie in together, where the themes don't necessarily have anything to do with one another, one of the hardest tasks that you have as an artist is how can I try to combine these two themes together through my design to really make this feel like one cohesive pair of shoes and not just one shoe dedicated to the weekend and one shoe dedicated to Cuddy, but they don't have anything to do with one another. But you totally achieve that on these really just through your design and through your layout. Another great little touch on these is the very slight vignette that's around all of your red panels and it really stands out on this panel where you have all of the gold polka dots from the suit that he wore. The rope laces were a great add on here. I love the graphics that you did on the insoles. I think that overall, if there was anything that I might potentially do a little bit different, I think that from this angle, you could kind of see that the white guts might have been better suited with another color. Even black, for example, I think could have enhanced these. But I think that sometimes you just have to ask yourself, if you were absolutely required to paint every single portion of the shoe, would you select white as the color for your tongue and for your sock liner for this theme? And I totally get it. Sometimes you need to leave room for certain areas of the shoe to breathe. You don't want to take away from the artwork in any way. But when everything else on this shoe is so top notch and the design itself is so well planned out, you don't want to leave any stone unturned. But altogether, this is definitely an amazing pair of custom shoes. So great job by you, Shaw Customs. Next up, we have a pair here from Chummy's Customs. All right, let's see here. Thank you, Dylan, for featuring me on Reviewing Your Customs. I've been watching your videos for a while now, and I thank you for introducing me to the custom sneaker world. I'm also in my fourth year of architecture school. Ah, very cool, at Kent State, but hoping to do this full time someday. Thanks again, Colin Zumski. Well, you made it further than I did being in your fourth year. I wish you the best of luck on graduating architecture school. Definitely not for the faint of heart, so shout out to you, man. But let's go ahead and check out these shoes now. All right, we've got a really clean and simple pair of Dragon Ball Z Jordan 1s right here, utilizing some of that classic Jordan 1 color blocking that we're all super familiar with, using some of those main colors that are in Goku and Gohan's outfits, that signature orange and blue. And then some of these panels are also wrapped in this really cool cartoon outline effect. I definitely dig how that turned out. And then on the outsides of both shoes is where we have our big character portrait. So on the outside of the left shoe, we have Goku. And then on the outside of the right shoe, we have Gohan. 
Then on the upper collars of both shoes, you can see that we have Goku's symbol from his training top. And I think that it was a really smart choice here to put it up against the orange since his top is actually orange. Whereas you could have done it actually a little bit larger up against this blue panel. And that's where typically you might see a large symbol like this. But I really dig how you did it a little bit smaller and on this orange panel here. Then we have the Z from the Dragon Ball Z logo done on the tongue tags of both shoes. And since this was an all white pair to start, you painted the tongues black. You do sometimes end up with a little bit of black paint that's going to seep into the stitching of the tongue tag. So I think that this could have been a great opportunity to paint that entire tongue tag black and then also include the Dragon Ball right on top of the Z within the logo there. Now taking a closer look at some of your character work, I think that overall these are very well done. Your line weights are very consistent throughout. All of your colors are nice and saturated. You really packed in a lot of great detail. All of your shading looks really good. I think that you nailed the sizing and placement of the characters themselves on these. And since you're working on a pair of Jordan 1s and you have to stretch the artwork across all of these different panels, that definitely presents some challenges, but you still did a great job on these. These actually have a little bit more of a free-handed look and feel to them than if you were to actually use a stencil for the characters themselves. So I do think that some of your proportions could have been tightened up, but another thing that you run into when you're doing large scale character work like this, especially when it's gonna be up against a clean and simple custom, you really wanna to try to avoid the characters themselves ever sort of just looking like stickers thrown on top of the rest of a really clean custom. So on the Goku shoe, the way that you have him interacting with the Nike swoosh, in which you basically added a glowing effect, and now it kind of looks like Goku's getting ready to do a Kamehameha effect, the same can't be said for Gohan, who kind of looks like a sticker just slapped on top of a really clean custom. So you want to try to find a way for your character to basically interact with the background, in my opinion. So in this situation, for example, with Gohan, you chose this really cool perspective where his right fist is far forward, and you could have almost pretended that his right fist was punching through the rest of the shoe, and then followed that up by doing this really cool crack through effect. All of these little bits and pieces could have been exploding surrounding it, or just done a simple glow behind him, which then could have been stretched onto some of the different panels. Any way that you can get your characters to interact with the rest of the shoe, with the background that it's in, that will always really help tie the theme in together even more. Some of these edges right around the swoosh could use a little touch up. All of those should be black and that'll give this an even cleaner look. Then I think that I also probably would have continued this cartoon outline effect on some of these blue panels that you have on the back heel here. And I think that all of these would have then had a really nice flow to them. I'm sure the thought process was that you didn't want to take away from your character work at all since those are sort of the two main panels that your characters are stretched across. But just those black cartoon outlines, I don't think would have distracted in any way. But overall, this is just a really clean, simple, and dope pair of Dragon Ball Z Jordan 1. So great job by you, Chummies Customs. And our final pair of the day is gonna be from Jow Customs. All right, let's see. Dylan, thank you for taking the time to review my Spider-Man customs. I can speak for all customizers that we appreciate you always sharing tips and holding different contests that help us develop our skills as artists. For these customs, I used a combination of paintbrush and airbrush to achieve a more factory design look. Shout out to Reclusive Soul for the custom insoles. If any customizers need custom insoles, he is very easy to work with and can help bring out whatever vision you may have. IG Jow Customs. So we've got our all black Air Force One highs, red laces, and then these huge Spider-Man portraits that stretch across the entire upper. Now, both of these are really meant to look and feel like a painting themselves, whereas there is no distractions on the rest of the uppers. All of that is left completely black, and then you have these really, really dope landscape settings where Spider-Man's in these hero poses, and you just see New York City in the background with this really cool dusk or dawn setting. And I think that you absolutely accomplished your goal here and definitely brought your vision to life. If we take a look at Spider-Man, for example, right here, it basically looks like he's ready to sling his web right at you. And I have to give you huge props on how you really laid out this composition. The way that Spider-Man's head is just perfectly tucked in between that eyelet panel and the sock liner, great job there. And take a look at that thumb, how it just perfectly tucks right into that back heel tab. 
This was definitely well planned out and you really captured a lot of great depth within this piece also. Both of these pieces definitely have a really nice artistic feel to them when you take a closer look, since you mentioned you tried to combine a little bit of hand painting along with some airbrushing, and that definitely comes across on these. Huge props to you for having both of these tools in your arsenal and not being afraid to do shadows and highlights with both of them. So there's just a ton of great detail and shading packed in by hand, and a lot of great highlights and shadows added with your airbrush. Now, if we take a look at the two pieces side by side, what I think makes the left shoe stand out a little bit more in my opinion, is take a look right along the edge of Spider-Man's face. You could see that the right side of his face is shaded more than the left side, but it's also right up against this really bright yellow, which just softly fades out into this blue sky. So Spider-Man's face is now really pushed forward because of that, and that's exactly what we want to separate him from the background, and Spider-Man's mask obviously being the most important part of this entire painting, that's exactly what you should be going for. Whereas on the right shoe here, it looks like you're going for a little bit more of like a cloudy vibe in this background, so you're trying to airbrush in a little bit of that white along Spider-Man's mask. Now we don't have have as harsh of an edge there in black, but what we're also losing is some of that really bright yellow that definitely helps distinguish and bring forward Spider-Man's mask. So I think that what could have worked out really cool here, since the back of Spider-Man's head is in shadow from this pose, therefore the front of him is a little bit brighter, maybe going with a little bit of a darker yellow to really help distinguish that edge and push Spider-Man's face forward. But overall, you gotta admire all of the great detail that you packed into these classic Sam Raimi and Tobey Maguire Spider-Man suits. This is the Spider-Man I grew up with, so I'm always gonna love that silver webbing on the suits, but I do think that Andrew Garfield's suit in The Amazing Spider-Man 2 might be my favorite to date, but don't tell anybody. Anyways, this is an absolutely amazing Spider-Man piece. Obviously, this is something that you don't see very often when it comes to custom shoes, not utilizing the entire shoe, but I think that there's a time and place for everything, and really trying to bring a painting to life, picking a canvas like this, Great choice, and this is a piece that I'm definitely a fan of. So great job by you, Jow Customs. So there you have it, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. Please make sure you go and give all of these amazing artists to follow on Instagram. Show them some love. They do some really great work. And you know what? People always ask me, what do I do with the shoes after an episode? I, of course, send them back to the artist. But all of these pairs look so damn good up here kind of tempted to keep them. So if they take a little bit longer in transit, guys, don't be surprised. Anyways, please be sure to go ahead and give this video a like if you haven't already. Make sure you're subscribed. But until next time, I'm Dylan DeJesus. Now everybody get out there and just create.